Hello everyone and welcome to this second part of this video series on the exercise on using Builder and Results by CMG. And to remind you, our goal is to create this model and uh, predict oil and gas production from the model. And we so far have gone through the IO control and the reservoir definition. And right now in this video tutorial, we are going to go over how to define the components, the rock fluid properties, and the initial conditions. Are you ready? Let us go. So uh, first we're going to start by showing one slightly unrelated thing, and that is how to divide our field into sectors. You know, sometimes you may want to find out, you know, not just production for the whole field, but maybe production in the sector, the average porosity in the sector, you just want to divide your um, grid into some areas. So the way you're going to do that is actually still inside the reservoir. We're going to da -da -da -da, create a sectors. Up oh, there it is. Create edit sectors towards the bottom. Now we're going to make those are fun three sectors. So for example, here we're going to make a let's say northeast sector. We're going to call it N E. Now I'm going to go with the mouse towards my map. I'm going to highlight some area, approximately what I think is the northeast of the map. Looks pretty good. I'm going to unclick and add selected blocks to sector. But um, now it's pink. It means it's all happy and northeast has been defined. Okay, of course we have to press apply. <clears throat> and now we can move on to doing our next sector. We're going to do the northwest. Okay, we're going to try to make another zone, approximately as such. Now, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect, just approximately right. And add selected blocks to sector. Up, oh, highlighted. Everything is beautiful. Let's make one more whole big. Okay, again, I forgot to apply. Let's make one more here. And we're going to call it south. And okay. And let us highlight the southern section. There we go. Oh, something screwed up. Let's try that again. Hmm. Well, my computer is acting a bit slow today. So let's say add selected blocks to sector. Oh, it worked even though it was slow. Let's click on apply. And now let's look at the sectors just to review. We got them right. We got the northeast, the northwest and the south. This way we're able to output our information for specific areas. So that's nice and very useful if you have one interested in that kind of divided information. Okay, now let us move on to components. So we're going to click on components and then double click right over here on component properties or maybe on model. Oh, there we go. And we're going to use um, a dialog box to create a quick black oil model. So we're going to click on OK here, and now we're just going to fill out the values. So what is our reservoir temperature? So let's say it's 150 Fahrenheit. Again, fortunately, all these American units now 5,100 psi. Now you have to be careful over here because there's different ways you can define each one of these. So we can choose for the first one for the bubble point pressure to, uh, to list the value. And over here, we're going to choose the uh, stock tank oil gravity API. And over here, gas gravity where air equals one. And now we're going to give it the following values. 35, 0 0.7. And oops, I might have made a little error. Sorry, that doesn't make sense. 4900 over here. Uh, yeah, that gas gravity at 0 0.7 makes much more sense. That's okay. And I think that was 35. And over here, we're going to go to 4900. Zero and 10,000 parts per million of water salinity. Okay, and we're gonna click on okay. And as we do that, we see here the RS versus P values. Look at all these nice parameters which help us determine 
what a barrel in the subsurface is equal to in on the pressure at um, at the surface. Okay, now basically we're done with components. That's how easy it was. Now I will just show you one thing, just in case you ever want to do it. Remember how in the previous tutorial we said you can have different different regions, for example, for compressibility. So you could also do the same and create different regions for PVT by going here and adding another PVT region and then assigning it inside the reservoir and deciding which block has which PVT region. Also, you can go here into tools and you can generate water properties using correlations. So that's, that's cool. You can play around here. Same thing, generate PVT table using correlations. So you have a lot of options, but we're just going to stick to the basics. Great, we're, we are ready to move on to the rock fluid properties. And this is basically going to be just relative permeability curves for us. So we're going to go here and find a new rock type. It's going to automatically be one. We're going to ignore capillary pressure for now. Now if you go to your data folder that you downloaded, you can go here and you see an Excel sheet with the relative permeability curves. And notice we have two sets of relative perme permeability curves. We have the water oil and the liquid gas. So we're going to go here and I'm going to copy paste the water oil relative permeability curves. And move it back to here. And I'm going to paste it right here. Control C, Control V. And you can already see there's something looking like a pretty rough but nice looking water oil relative perme permeability curves. Now we're going to fill out the liquid gas table and we're going to remove capillary pressures from consideration. We're going to go back to our Excel sheet and over here we're going to highlight this zone like this and then we are going to go here and click. La! Look at that! Looks so nice. Now this might be just from some sort of core data and that's why it's so choppy. So we can go here into tools and smooth table and we'll use power law smoothing for all properties and click on smooth curves and then on okay i'll should update here how the new curves look but we'll go look at it in a second now we can go to the water oil table again we go into tools and smooth table and we will choose power law for all for all properties and click on okay Oh, at least here we can see pretty well that it's smooth. If we go and move on to this place, for some reason it's not showing. Well, may, let us go here and check it out. What has happened? Smooth? Not smooth. Well, let us try to fix that one more time then. Let's go back to rock fluid properties, to the liquid gas table. Let us click again on smooth table and power law for all. Click on smooth curve and OK. Oh, and now it worked. Maybe you had to press on smooth curve and I missed out. Oh well, what can we do? Let's continue on. I think we only have one more thing to look at and that is the initial conditions. Basically, we need to tell the computer what are the initial saturations and pressure throughout our model. So the way we can do it is I just double clicked on initial conditions. I'm going to click on water oil system. Make sure if you have water, oil, and gas, you press up there, and water, gas, you press down here. Now we're going to put a reference pressure and depth. Like, what is the pressure at a certain depth? So you have to give it both values. So let us do that. Okay, so we're going to put here a value of 4,900, and we're going to put here a value of 10,000. Great. And we're going to put the water oil context will help the software develop decide what the saturations are. So you can put the water oil contact at 10,100. And now we have this datum depth for used for output of pressure data to be normalized according to certain depth. 10,400. And we keep this here as reservoir initially saturated at pressure, uh, pressure bubble point equals pressure. Um, Okay, and we'll keep these defaults over here and click on OK. Bum, ba, da, da, bum, bum, bum. Now that was quick. We're basically done with this little, little short tutorial. Let's just go back to rock fluid and I show you one more thing. So let's say in the rock fluid type, 
you didn't have this table. But you knew basically you've heard of query curves or other things. You can go here into Tool, Generate Tables using Correlation. And then you can choose here uh, to input certain endpoint saturation and all the different values. And then it can generate the curve for you. So that's nice. Also look here, if you click on Show Equations, it will show you the different exponents and everything else, how this equation works. Perfect, I think we are done. So stay tuned for one more, a few more, two or three more short tutorials for this exercise, where we will cover the importation of the wells, um, looking at solution, and yeah, well, stay tuned.